السلام عليكم we'll talk about the basics of cemented total knee arthroplasty important uh, surgical anatomy I want you to know distal femur is in about 9 degree of valgus lateral distal anatomical axis is about 9 degree of valgus but the whole lower limb is in 6 degree of valgus this is 9 and the whole lower limb is in 6 degree of valgus this is because that the proximal tibia is in 3 degree of varus it's about 93 so the distal femoral anatomical axis is about 81 and proximal medial tibial anatomical axis is about 93 so the whole lower limb alignment <coughs> is in 6 degree of valgus also there is a posterior slope about 6 degree 7 degree so if I put my extra medullary guide for the tibial cut here and the rod is away from the tibial shaft like this so I increase the slope and if it is near the shaft decrease the slope so be careful when you adjust the rod in the sagittal plane as you will see later also in axial plane you have two prominence the lateral femoral condyle is more prominent anterior this is anterior and this is posterior and we see the distal femur in axial plane lateral prominence anteriorly and medial prominence posteriorly so this lateral prominence to help with medial patellofemoral ligament to stabilize the patella and to prevent lateral dislocation so when I do a femoral cut the anterior cut if the lateral cut is less than the medial there is something wrong all the time the lateral cut is more and posteriorly is the reverse the posterior femoral cut is more than medially is more than laterally we are talking just to, uh, basically we will take uh, soon uh, anatomy and biomechanics of the knee and uh, we will discuss all in detail so in axial plane two prominence anterior and posterior regarding history we do total knee for osteoarthritic patient the first item i want to focus is knee pain you have to be sure that the source of pain is knee not back not the hip up to if there is a doubt that you can inject actually if, uh, in uh, uh, in my own practice I refuse steroid injection of the knee but if totally destructed and there is an overlap of other pathology I can be sure that the knee is the main or dominant we 
dominant source of pain by steroid injection and even it is prognostic for the patient and I can tell him that this relief transient relief is the same or nearly the same as post op because if there is an overlap of pathology like spine or hip you focus to treat the most uh, dominant site of pain first so if the pack is fair uh, uh, is the dominant site of pain you start with pack uh, for example lumbar canal stenosis if the <coughs> hip is, uh, is the first is the uh, main site of pain you start with it and so on second item i want you to uh, be aware of scar because blood supply of the knee, skin of the knee, is coming from medial to lateral. So, if you have two scar, one in the midline and one is lateral, you have to go for lateral to increase or to decrease the lateral flap, to increase the medial flap which is supplied directly, and to decrease the size of the lateral flap to decrease the incidence of skin uh, problems also uh, uh, we, we take uh, 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 we already uh, took uh, a detailed lecture about knee examination uh, so you have to review the same system in the inspection, either from the front or the back, you have to observe the alignment. Degree of varus or uh, uh, commonly valgus, uh, uh, sorry, commonly varus or less commonly valgus alignment is important in, uh, in deciding what you will do intraoperative. We are talk till now basically. In examination, uh, for varus or vulgus, you have to differentiate between fixed type or uh, reducible type. Because if the alignment of a varus or vulgus is, uh, is uh, uh, too much, as you will see later, we will use an augment or we will use a long stem uh, tibial process with or without augment. So be careful. Also in the history, uh, the item I uh, forget to uh, to focus about drug, uh, especially uh, rheumatological drugs or steroid for long use, because also in the decision making, if uh, rheumatological, I prefer long stem. If uh, taking a, a long history of steroids, the bone is very weak. So I also take uh, a, uh, put a long stem processes. A range of motion also. Flexion contraction is the most difficult situation. We will take this later in soft tissue balancing. Okay, go on F by imaging. Mostly old patient needing only standing X-ray. No need for MRI. Uh, 55. If it is uh, uh, about 45, you can do, but there is uh, uh, no rule of uh, arthroscopy, arthroscopic debridement, and arthritic patient in old age. So the usual X-ray is the standing x-ray uh, 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 normal x-ray uh, MRI I didn't request I don't request in uh, in old uh, older patient differential diagnosis hip back and rheumatological condition is the most most important to differentiate surgical option for arthritic patient is either 
uh, osteotomy or arthroplasty arthroscopic debridement little to no role uh, and also there is uh, uh, other uh, option is uh, partial arthroplasty unicompartmental arthroplasty we will take a hint about uh, unicompartmental later today we will take a basics about total regarding indication for me I need three strict indication to do a total arthroplasty pain in the knee not in the back or the hip and uh, interrupting with sleep second thing pain interrupting the function so the daily activities for this patient can't be accomplished uh, uh, third thing distracted x-ray so if there is a discrepancy between uh, symptoms and x-ray you have to recheck again mostly will be rheumatological so you have to control disease first and reassess again this is the indication for uh, contraindication uh, infection also focus on patient with poor motivation or the reverse unrealistic expectations uh, uh, the patient need arthroplasty uh, come to you and beg you to do arthroplasty don't uh, uh, try to uh, convince him about arthroplasty and its options uh, on the other side unrealistic expectation uh, some patient coming to uh, you and tell you uh, uh, football and basket after uh, total uh, knee for me I refuse this patient so be careful about this item preoperative also uh, another uh, lecture we will uh, take regarding position Uh, shaving mostly not in the same room in the other room when he coming from the ward uh, waiting uh, in other rooms then in the operating room uh, we didn't have uh, this pump we do a pump with saline here and fix it to make the knee fully uh, flexed without the aid of the assistant to do this avoid bulky drops and make the tourniquet as high as possible uh, to make the knee about 130 degree of flexion uh, this is regarding position and also before uh, inflating the tourniquet uh, give the uh, first regeneration kephalosporin regarding approach also there is a, a separate uh, lecture about approaches we use midline medial uh, midline medial barabateller incision medial barabateller incision leave some white tissue from uh, quadriceps tendon and retinaculum then direct to the uh, uh, medial side of patellar tendon this is the medial side and this is the lateral side we put uh, uh, w when, you, when you open midline incision of the skin try to make a thick flap first skin and full thickness subcutaneous until you see the uh, start of uh, muscle uh, and we do all our job in varus, most commonly varus, in uh, from the medial side. 
so no need to do a full thickness undermining flap on the lateral side avoid undermining on the lateral side you can do it in the medial side because you need it in the lateral side no need as little as you can flip evert this patella okay this knee now is extended you do when you open this direct perpendicular uh, snip of the uh, your knife here uh, actually I, I jump my knife on the tendon jumping don't uh, don't push it to avoid inadvertent bus way so I jump 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 from point to point jumping 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 my knife and feeling the bone underside till I reach okay to do an inversion of the patella uh, your eyes all the time on the patellar tendon so from starting from extended position I avert the patella laterally then uh, begin to flex flex the knee flex the knee flex the knee and feeling the tension on the patellar tendon after removing of all tissue you see around the patella and the fat uh, behind the patellar tendon you feel the tension of the patellar tendon and progressively uh, going into flexion until fully ever if there is a difficulty extend your incision in the quadriceps tendon there is other types we are talking of uh, uh, about uh, basics uh, for uh, TKR uh, but practically we extend it proximally you can avert it easily then put an retractor on the lateral side of the femoral condyle and on the tibia when you avert the patella and flex the knee totally start with bony uh, osteophytes all around femur tibia sides of the patella then soft tissue uh, patellar tendon, retro patellar fat bed, uh, menisci, uh, medial and lateral, ACL, uh, uh, supra patellar pouch should be cleaned to the anterior surface, mainly lateral anterior surface of the femur. Here, all the uh, retro patellar pouch should be removed. Retro patellar pouch. Is a synovial pouch behind the extensor mechanism and in front of the femur and yourself when I size the femoral component I need the lateral side the lateral highest side of the anterior surface of the femur to put my stylus to measure the size of the femoral component regarding also regarding the uh, medial side dissection here the uh, uh, my ex, uh, inferior limit is usually bis and serenius tendon here when you dissect coronary ligaments and uh, all soft tissue here don't uh, try to go posterior to the mid sagittal of the tibia mid sagittal of the tibia to avoid damage to the medial collateral mainly the superficial part of the medial collateral uh, ligament we are talking about basics and we are talking about primary simple virus tkr medial barbatellar approach knee joint exposure starting from retro patellar fat bed uh, upper part of the medial side of the tibia dissection till the mid sagittal removing the uh, both meniscus acl any soft tissue 
ساي اكسترا ساينوفيوم سوبرا باتيلر فات باد اند اول اوسيوفايت اول اراوند ذا نيه في مار باتيلا اند تيبيا زين باتيلر ان بيتوين باتيلر ايفيرجن زين ستارتينج ذا بون كاتس whether to go for tibia first or femur first uh, it is about your comfort for me i starting from femur mostly from femur regarding the femur regarding the femur to cut To cut the femur and tibia, you have either extramedullary device or intramedullary device. Extramedullary device has an advantage and intramedullary has an advantage, usually. For the tibia, we use extramedullary device. For the femur, usually, we use intramedullary device. Usually about 99% uh, Nearly always, sorry, not usually For both femur and tibia Femur, uh, intramedullary device Intramedullary device That I put an intramedullary guide Along its anatomical axis This axis And all parameters will be adjusted According to your system For the tibia We use extramedullary device As you will see we starting with the femur so to put intramedullary rod you have to know the point actually it is the same point for uh, intramedullary nail about about one centimeter in the front of acl origin bcl sorry bcl origin And actually, you put you put your fingers on the anterior surface of the femur. You are uh, on the side of the femur, standing here, and put your uh, drill bit first. and uh, align with your finger your fingers on the anterior surface lying on the anterior surface feeling the anterior surface of the femur and then going to, uh, by your drill so your fingers is here and going down with your drill then after finishing the drill you, you have to go uh, by your drill till the end here make it larger then suck the uh, fat inside irrigate the medulla because this is one of the causes of fat embolism then after this you only put your guide distally to start with the distal femoral cut so after you doing uh, you open the uh, medulla of the femur you put your guide here and all the system is going down to the femur to take this part distal femur you will cut the anterior part of the femur and distal femur and posterior femur and the anterior chamfer posterior chamfer and box you will see later so we start with the distal femur cutting of the distal femur why to remove everything and put my sizer this is the sizer notice that the sizer 
to detect the site of the femoral sides of femoral component you have posterior foot on the posterior condyle if you remember that I inform you that you have two prominence anterior laterally and posterior medially so it will rotate according to this femoral condyle and this is the about three degree external rotation automatically so in the preoperative planning you will focus that the posterior femoral condyle is is in its normal size or not because if there is any doubt you will do uh, go for CT and uh, uh, depend on other landmarks not only the foot because if the femur posterior femoral condyle isn't a prominent posterior and arthritic so it is taken down and become at the same level of the posterior part of the lateral femoral condyle it will be internally rotated and your porosis femoral component will be internally rotated and if anything any component either the femur or the tibia is internally rotated or internally translated medially translated it will affect the patellofemoral tracking and uh, beginning from simple subluxation till frank dislocation so be careful that the femoral condyle posterior medial femoral condyle is intact in its size because all systems this foot is resting on it then I inform you that supra patellar bowels should be cleared totally to let your stylus going down so detecting the size and reading here uh, B C D E and so on and if it is between two sizes like say say E and F you will take the larger one usually you will take the larger one so you take the size going to your tray and taking the size say uh, uh, F then you will remove everything and put your F on the femur adjusting only medial and lateral rotation medial and lateral rotation and I inform you that should be within the limit of the bone slightly lateralized then after this adjustment you will take the anterior part and posterior part and anterior and posterior chamfer and beginning the box you finish now the femur simply you finish the femur okay another tip when you take the size and take the size there is a wing try not to make it uh, smaller uh, as I tell you that between E and F you will take F why because if you take smaller one and going for the anterior cut it could be below the anterior part of the femur making notching and become more susceptible to very prosthetic fracture later on this is the cause that we are taking larger one and we put here actually a wing here and rotate it above the femur and uh, see that it is above or hitting part of the femur so if hitting part of the femur you will take a larger one 
then uh, finishing your cuts anteriorly then posterior so you are taking first distal femoral cut then going for sizing and begin with anterior then posterior then chamfer cut anterior and posterior then the box actually this uh, uh, this diagram i inform you that the medial part is more prominent posteriorly than this so when you put the distal femoral component foot uh, here it will take its normal rotation but be careful that if it is not in normal size it will be internally rotated so you will depend on another line which is trans epicondylar line taking with your diathermy like this and white line which is perpendicular midline in the groove this is the other two lines this is is called posterior condylar line which is usually in three degree of external rotation this is the distal cut we start with the distal cut then the anterior cut then the posterior cut then chamfer cuts and books so we will go for the tibia there was an external uh, internal uh, intramedullary rod guide here is extramedullary rod guide this is the guide and this is the TV you have lens up and down here your saw will go in to cut the bone so up and in to decide how much of the tibia will be taken and anteroposterior so if this guide is going anteriorly like this this cut will be like this if it is going down to the bone so this cut will be elevated like this so either here or there will affect the tibial slope this is the second cut then there is an axial rotation cut we will see so regarding this how we will put my rod this first one is and there is a hook uh, or clamps around medial and lateral malleolus then i put two finger prints here this is about the same as tibial uh, slope and about the length up or down about the length up or down detected through this this larger one is on the medial side about taking about two millimeters when it is resting on the uh, lowest part of the medial femoral condylar, it's about taking about two millimeter, and this is the highest one. Put it on the lowest point on the lateral tibial plateau. So this is for medial, and this is for lateral. This is a marker of two millimeter cut. This is up and this is anteroposterior. I think now it is clear. And also, there is other landmark. This uh, rod, when I adjust and become uh, 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 satisfied, I uh, put this rod and should be aligned with the tibial shaft to the uh, first web between the first and second uh, two. the last one is the rotation i inform you we are all the time trying to 
making our processes externally rotated or, uh, uh, and somewhat externally and lateralized so when I put this I inform you that about the shaft and actually it is in the medial third of the tibial tuberosity it's midline this midline is about the medial aligned to the medial third of the tibial tuberosity so I take a mark with the diatherm then for axial rotation this midline is with the medial line is the uh, 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 on the previously marked uh, diatherm and also all the time make the posterior medial corner of your uh, cutting jig on the posterior medial corner of the tibia this is will make an external rotation uh, alignment so here midline with the medial third of the tibial torus this is resting on the posterior medial core they go to the jig and this is also finishing the uh, tibia cut then putting our trial femoral and tibial between the spacer then doing extension and deflection and vars vagus in both extension and var and uh, and uh, flexion seeing uh, uh, which part is tight which part is loose and going into if you need uh, parts or so we are all about temple primary to knee uh, advances later this is the extra medallion uh, guide uh, of the tibia soft passing soft passing simply simply for varus uh, uh, for all contractor either uh, uh, varus valgus flexion contractor be sure that all types keyword is osteophyte osteophyte is removed all over tibia femur anterior posterior media lateral and patella uh, is removed further then reassess of tissue and detailed will be uh, later simply for the medial side we didn't go behind The metasagittal of the tibia. I think we finish a trial component to, uh, uh, as I inform you, femur tibia and spacer in between, uh, valgus varus inflection and extension and assess bone and bone cuts and soft tissue should be uh, I, I i have to uh, to bring a photo about trapezoidal and rectangular shape i will take it uh, again and uh, talk about it again in uh, and biomechanics anyway this is the trial and fix it with cement starting with the tibia first then the femur then balsatile lavage and uh, uh, and examining the patellar tracking after finishing these cuts uh, without putting pushing uh, uh, we uh, bring the battle back to its normal uh, side without pushing it without pushing it medially you fix and extend and seeing the battle is tracking in the midline of the femur and tibia and if it is so without dislocation laterally so I think it is perfect uh, everything is, will be okay but if it is sublaxis so there is some mal alignment and we uh, 
we will talk also later about the how to manage uh, intraoperative then irrigate and close in layer uh, in layer starting with the See here, when you load, the most important is to try to make the uh, uh, repair of quadriceps mechanism the same as before. So, so don't, don't try to make the repair high to close this layer like this. Or like this. If you do like this, it is alta and this baja. So, so be careful when you cut up or the, uh, when you cut, when you repair, uh, repair in the uh, in this direction, not, not in this, this direction or this uh, down to this direction, and this usually with uh, vicryl 2.0. Uh, thank you. Assalamu alaikum.